Hello, testing. Can you hear me? John, how are you, brother? Oh, good. How are you? Yeah. It's been a bit of a day, hasn't it? I mean, yeah. Jake, I mean, he quotes uh, Titus 310. And then do, I, can't, I should have counted the hours. I meant to do, but it's done about two hours worth, three videos on Tim. And it, it's funny, too, because they'll say you should only do two videos, yet he does three videos. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> yeah. And, and they'll try to say, well, Tim did three videos. Actually, no. Tim's first video wasn't about JT. His two other videos were about Brian. So he only did two videos on Brian. That's, you know, they'll, they'll try to come back with that. But I never noticed Tim doing a video about Jake recently because I've subscribed to his channel just to keep a... Well, not keep an eye on, but just, you know, someone all sort of what's going on like. But I don't think Tim's directed a video at Jake, has he? Uh, well, back when um, JT was involved in that, I think it was that, oh, was it? Back in June or whatever, he did a video uh, because JT was in some sin and, and Tim did a video, you know, uh, showing the correspondence and stuff. And that, because he did three videos, two about Brian and then one trying to correct JT. Oh. I thought it was, yeah, I was, it was a recent video. Oh, it was, it was back. Video. It was last year. Uh, so he's a slow responder then, is he? Uh, well, actually, these videos by uh, JT apparently were, I guess, responding to some recent videos Tim did where supposedly Tim was attacking JT, which, again, just shows this kind of persecution complex they have. Oh, they're attacking us. They're attacking us. You know, it's like ridiculous. Well, the and I'm, I'm sure you'd agree. I think that's one of the reasons why, if you're going to not do an attack video, it's probably the wrong word, but do a, a video exposing the lies of someone who's saying a Christian and all that, you should actually give the name. I don't mean yeah, that, that, full name, yeah. but I mean they use the channel and whatever, you know. Exactly, yeah. I mean, if I was going to expose somebody, you know, because I find like what a counter KJV, KJV does a lot is he'll attack you, but then he won't name you. He, like he'll, he'll attack me, but he won't name me. It's like, come on, name names, you know? It's like when, when I expose somebody, I'll, I'll name who they are. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason for that is it's because anybody hearing it, um, they might know that it's about them. And so they're going to make a comment or make a video. Uh, there's plausible deniability there and they're just going to make themselves look paranoid. Oh, I think this guy's done a video about me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it's almost like an admission if you say that, isn't he? Yeah, because like he'll, he'll, he'll kind of word his, his, like when he says something, he'll kind of word it in a way to where like you know it's about you, but then he just won't mention your name. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed him. I mean, right in the middle. I mean, th this guy. I mean, I don't want to keep going on about accountable KJV. I don't despise him. I believe he's saved. Yeah, he, he just, he's just in some error. That's all. He's in, he's in some error. But like Aaron Deering did. I mean, I, when, he, when, when he did that video on Judas Iscariot, what happened? I thought, oh, he's going to do some teaching on Judas Iscariot. But no, it was a tall hatchet job on A.B. Maritime Bible Believer. And then the yeah, it, KJV, it was an attack on him. And then a cowboy KJV does a video. And cause somebody told me about it. I don't listen to his videos. I, I do other things with it. But right in the middle of a sermon, he's apparently preaching God's word. Right. And then sort of slap bang in the middle. It, he used me as an example, or oh, that, that guy in the UK, the Jesuit provincial, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then he'll carry on with his sermon. And like, they're using, it's, they are using God's word as a cloak for wickedness. Exactly. I mean, it, it, in Aaron's sermon, uh, there, there's this channel, I'm not sure if you've seen it, it's called uh, Brian Denlinger Call Archive. And, and this channel has mirrored um, the sermon by Aaron where it was like, you know, Judas Iscariot. And it's like Aaron, he reads from Jude chapter 1, verses 11 to 16, and then just, you know, uses it to attack A.B. Maritime Bible believer. Like, you're right, they're using the word of God 
for maliciousness, for wickedness. What was the name of that channel again? Uh, I'll see if I can find it. It was it was a channel called uh, Brian Denlinger Cult Archive, oh, really? and the channel is mirroring like videos from the Brian Denlinger Cult. Oh. I'll see if I can find it. I mean, I'm probably going to get blamed for this other channel. I've actually put him as a, a thingy on mine. Pope Brian Denlinger or something or other. Absolutely not. Yeah, there's the, yeah, there's this other channel too, Pope Brian Denlinger and his cult exposed. It's like, yeah. 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 Here's the, here's the channel of, of the uh, Brian Denlinger cult archive. Is it in private chat, John? So I can copy the link. Oh, uh, I'll put it in the private chat. There is this video by Vice of an Errantist. I think his channel, he deleted his channel. I don't know why, but but he did this video um, where he was like saying, you know, we see you skulking about or whatever. Was that even about me or something? Because like, I don't know. Because it, like I, someone told me he was attacking me or something, but I didn't watch the video because I, I wasn't going to waste my time. But um, referring to, I'm sure who? he was. See, that's the problem. You don't know who is who they're referring to. They'll just make a comment like, "Oh, I see you skulking about," as you said, but they'll never tell you who it is. Yeah, it's kind of funny. They won't tell you. They won't name names. But then they'll condemn you if you don't name names. Like they condemn Breaker for not naming names. Yeah, they don't do it themselves. They'll they'll like be very subtle about it. You know. Oh, it's funny. actually kind of funny because I, I I know somebody else who is very subtle too. Talks about in uh, Genesis chapter three how the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. You know, yeah. found that kind of interesting. That's kind of subtle, isn't it? it yeah. I mean, I'll have to have a look at this. Uh... This technique of just sort of, I mean, I, I have thought about it, um, of not naming names if you're going to level accusations and make comments. I think it's extremely unfair and pretty downright rude, really. And, and very deceptive as well. Yeah. And the thing is, it causes not fear, but um, apprehension at getting involved. I mean, these these Denlingers, the Fenningers, uh, <coughs> they must think that nobody sees what's going on. There must be, I don't know, 50 or 60 million people on YouTube. Yeah. And they of these videos and stuff, live streams. They see what's going on. They see the backstabbing and the backbiting and the nastiness within the sort of King James Bible-believing Christian, uh, I don't like the word movement, but movement, the, you know, it's like as though they don't, they don't realise that people are, I mean, this is a point that was being made to me by Mark Hunter. Unbelievers are seeing all this, and it's not a good witness at all. Yeah, I mean, atheists are coming out. Like, I saw a video. It was about Brian. It was called Racist Preacher Hates All Video Games or something like that. Um, and it was, like, I guess this atheist guy who was, like, you know, poking fun at Brian for saying that video games are, are, are will make you a loser and that kind of stuff. And it's, like, it is true. He is, you know, giving making making Christians look like we're fools and that kind of stuff. And obviously the preaching the gospel will make us look like fools. But, like, the way Brian is doing it, he's just, you know, being ridiculous, you know? Well, that live stream he did, and I, I, don't, I don't want to keep going on about Brian Dellinger. I think I know what he meant if I was going to be charitable about the words and phrasing that he used, but that video, as you remember, he did on the NIFB. And I actually emailed Frank. I said, oh, I mean, I can't believe that, you know, after this video that John wants anything to do with those people, but Brian come up with that video on the NIFB, you know, about the paedophile stuff. Yeah. And I mean, that is, other people are going to see that. Thousands of people will see that. And it makes us look like, it makes the body of Christ sort of look like dirt. 
in the eyes of the unbeliever, doesn't it? Well, I mean, get a load of this. I actually had a clip of him saying that, and I actually uploaded it on one of my channels, one of my backup channels, and it actually got terminated for hate speech, or it got terminated for inappropriate content, the clip of him saying that about the new IFB. So, like, and yeah. His video, I bet his, his video, I hate the word Ben, but his video, I bet, is still on his channel. On the yeah. NIF. Yeah. It's still on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. fine. Look at the thumbnail. Look at the thumbnail of that one video called uh, Accountable KJV Makes a Perverse Statement. I mean, look, just look at the thumbnail on that thing. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, just the way, just the way he's like smiling in that thumbnail. Oh, yeah. This is the one he did on me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, I believe it is. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> it's like, who, who opens a video like that? But, but John, somebody, somebody comprehending that he's a Christian and seeing that at the beginning, our oh, messianic believer, brilliant. What an excellent brother. Um, seeing that at the beginning of a video. <laughs> yeah. What do you say? It's just, it's like, yeah, you, you open it, just this laughter just comes on. It's like, oh my goodness. It's, it's just weird. And the sodomite wave, I think he stopped that. Oh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 With all seriousness. Yeah, you're kidding. It's <laughs> like with all seriousness, you should open it laughing. <laughs> Messianic believer, how are you, brother? I really, John, the way that this guy was spoken about, you know, when Brian did that video with it with his um, uh, mask thingy with a swastika on his arm as an armband. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a a Jewish believer in Jesus Christ. I'm not and bear in mind that Jesus Christ is obviously Jewish. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> oh, it's true. Yeah, and I, I have that video saved of him doing it. So it's like if he does delete it, I'll just I'll, I'll still have it saved. Yeah. If 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 I if if he does delete it, I might see if I can send it to this channel, Brian, and their cult archive, and see if they'll upload it. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't get. Yeah, Brad is a joke, unfortunately. I do acknowledge that he's a saved man. I've spent hundreds of hours taught. I'm not whinging now, John. This is the truth. As God is my witness, I'm not whinging about it. But I have spent. Hundreds of hours, at least 150, if not, you know, more, talking to him on that Google chat thingy app. Can't remember the name of it. Is it Google Messenger or something? I think then, Google Hangouts or something. Yeah, that's it. Google Hangouts, something like that. You can do it from your email uh, <laughs> thing. There's an app for it. And then he does the dirt on me like that. I've never said it or anything that would. It, I mean, why, how can he call me a Jesuit? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh. Why? Why? Because you because you did, because you broke fellowship with Brian. And you spoke against him. I broke. First so of all, I guess breaking fellowship with Brian and speaking against him and you know disagreeing with the Brian Denlinger cult makes you a Jesuit. You know. And I don't think I, I mean I, I don't, in, from my own point of view, I don't know if it's just me rewriting history. I don't think it is, but I don't think I was ever really a member of the Brian Denlinger crew. I mean, I, I was subscribed to him. I still am. Some of his videos are okay. I've actually posted a couple of his videos to my channel. He has done some excellent videos. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever done or said anything. I pulled Brad once. I think this might be the kicker, really. Because 
I told him I'd bought a book on uh, oh, called Trivium. Yeah, I know it's blind, but I mean, it's just uh, rhetoric, in, uh, grammar and logic, you know. And I, I read it because I wanted to, because I've been studying um, critical thinking and things like that, you know, uh, what fallacious arguments are and all that sort of thing. And he bought a book on the same subject critical thinking but it was written by a Roman Catholic nun I said to Brad what are you doing buying that a Roman Catholic nun wrote it and I don't know if I called him stupid or what but God because I'd seen that book and I was never going to buy it yeah yeah it's, it's funny that the, it's just funny how they'll preach against Catholics yet like they behave like Catholics themselves yeah, I've done, I've had about seven or eight, nine, ten channels before this one I've got now. I've done so many videos on Catholicism, the Jesuits. I mean, you've seen me Twitter ch uh, thingy. I think I'm up yeah, to like you're, you're constantly, you're, you're, you're constantly going after the Jesuits and the Catholics. Well, not lately, because it's not. But I don't think there's so much happening with all this lockdown stuff. They can't get their hands on yeah. the boys. But it's still going on. But I must have done about thirty or 40,000 tweets, John. Yeah. Since I got to well, jail. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and like, the, like you know, what's, what's that guy's name? Uriah1611. He called me a Roman Catholic because I, you know, spoke against Brian or whatever. But it's, it's like, I, if you, I have a playlist of videos called... Um, uh, Roman Catholicism exposed, refuted, and debunked. I have over ninety videos I've done attacking and exposing Roman Catholicism. So if I'm a Catholic, I'm pretty bad at it. Yeah, and I have noticed uh, the Ed Fenninger crew. Max Bauer might have done, to be fair to him, but the rest of the Ed Fenninger crew that are in that circle, I in the last uh, eighteen months, sixteen months or so. I haven't seen one of them do any video at all exposing Roman Catholicism, the horror of Babylon, and the Jesuits, the child abuse. I mean, I built a map of child abuse in America. Unclickable map thing. I'd, I lost it somehow. I can't remember how I managed to lose it. It took me two or three hours to build it. Uh, mm. You know, I've tried everything, John. The Catholics just don't listen. They just block you. That's it. Yeah. They gave up with the thing, you know. But they haven't done any videos exposing the real enemy of God's truth, God's word, the horror of yeah. Babylon, New Age versions. Those books. Yeah, I mean. Gone. Yeah. They are really. They, they, it's like the doctrine of Satan. The NIV, the NKJV, NASB. It's all hidden within there. This book I've got, uh, I mean, I've been meaning to study the subject of the, the undercurrent of the false teaching behind the, the all the verses missing, you know, and trying to find work out. And I got I bought this book because I had some money spare, sort of. And the damage that it's doing, John, is just Unbelievable, it's on a massive scale. Mm -hmm. The NIV, NKJV, it's all Satan's handiwork for the new world religion. Yeah. Well, they, they teach, you know, Catholic doctrines in those Bibles. Yeah. Or oh, they hide doctrine. But I mean, like, they, 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 they change the word hell. And the word evil is they either omit it or delete it or put a completely different word in that would sound similar to the untrained eye. And they, they're swallowing a false gospel. A false. I have some blog posts. I have some articles on the website exposing how the ESV, you know, teaching various Catholic heresies, and how I have one blog yeah. post showing how the ESV actually gives Satan one of. Uh, Jesus' titles in Isaiah 4, 12, 14, 12. Yeah, that's true, yeah. 
And when the Antichrist turns up, because we're not going to be here for it. Obviously, they're yeah. They're going to think the Antichrist is Jesus or something like that. Yeah, well, he's going to be essentially a false Christ. He's going to be like a imitation yeah. of Christ, basically. But I'll just, I'll just show this thing in uh, Isaiah chapter um, 14 and I, and it, not NIV, ESV talks about how in the King James, it says Lucifer, son of the morning. But in the ESV, it says in verse 12 of, of Isaiah 14, O day star, son of dawn, which is a title of Jesus Christ in Revelation twenty two sixteen, bright and morning star, which it calls Lucifer, star of the dawn, which is the morning. So it gives yeah. Satan one of Jesus' titles in, yeah. in the ESV, which is the, which the KJV calls Jesus, uh, Lucifer a son of the morning, not son of the morning star. But then in Revelation twenty-two sixteen, it calls Jesus Christ a bright and morning star. So it differentiates there. Yeah, yeah. I, I've read that chapter. Of, uh, Gail I, oh, I'm only 300 pages in. There's about 400 left, I think. But I've read that bit. It's absolutely crammed, John. I would... I don't know if you've got this book, New Age Bible Versions by Gail Ripplinger. But if you ever get some money spare, John, get it. It's absolutely crammed with stuff. Six years of, years of work she's done on that book. Yeah. In fact, I'm tempted... To, well, I couldn't... I don't know a website in your country where you could buy it from and I would never ask anyway but I'm tempted to help you pay for the book so you can get it to send mm. it to your address yeah I, I actually um, uh, might I might I'll have, to, I'll have to check my PayPal I might have some stuff in there but but uh, another thing I want to point out with the ESV too also is uh, how the ESV actually also removes the word Jehovah in the four verses that it appears in which is Exodus 6 3, uh, Psalms 83 18, Isaiah 12 2, and Isaiah 26 4. And, and those the ESE removes the word Jehovah from those four verses. Yeah. Yeah, it teaches satanic doctrine in the ESV and, and the other modern versions. Yeah. Uh, that's the English Standard Version, isn't it? Yeah. I covered that on my blog too, the how how it removes the name Jehovah and, and changes the name of God. I'm gonna get I'm gonna put a shortened link in the chat, John, so if anybody wants to check it out, they can do. Alright. Have you got oh I can put your PayPal account in later. If you want to put your PayPal account on there. Sure. I've got it on one a video. I think I put it in the chat on one of the videos. Oh. There. If anybody wants to click on this link, that'll take you to... Uh, and there, there's John's PayPal account. If anybody wants to chip in, I have donated before. I'm not going to tell you how much. It wasn't a lot. Just to help him get this book. I don't want to push this book on you, John, but I think knowing you... I, I, sounds like a good book. I think I might get it. Sounds like a good book. It's worth getting, John. Yeah, I, think I might. I might get it. Yeah. Uh, well, let's put it this way. I mean, for £17, which would be about 25 Canadian dollars or something... <laughs> this is it's a it's a six hundred and fifty page book, and it is absolutely. I mean, when I've read so far, I'm on page three hundred and forty-five, and there's another three hundred odd pages to read yet, and there's reference works and other. Actually, it goes up to seven hundred and it's seven hundred page book. 
yeah, I mean, they, they obviously have done a lot of research into that and shown how, you know, these modern versions are from Satan, basically. I also did another blog post about how the ESV also removes the word dispensation from the four verses that it appears in, which is 1 Corinthians 9, 17, Ephesians 1, 10, Ephesians 3, 2, and Colossians 1, 25. Yeah. And one of the main people behind all these false translations, John, so-called translations, these manuscripts that originate in Alexandria is one person's name, obviously Westcott and Hort, but Madame Blavatsky. Her name keeps cropping up through this book, and I'm only halfway through on nearly every page. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, these new so called versions, John, these new age books which is basically what they are. For the New World Order religion. Yeah, they are. The religion of the Antichrist. And, and isn't it surprising that these modern versions, which I covered on my blog as well, teach that we go into the time of Jacob's trouble and face the Antichrist. So, not surprising at all. He is reflected upon the word. Do you know him, John? Uh, yeah, I remember him. Yeah, I, I know who he is. I'll show this on screen. How are you? I don't know what your first name is, so... Oh, no, I'm not again. Oh, it's the alarm for me, but yeah, I'll do that in a minute. I set an alarm to do something. Is he, is he, are you there? Reflect upon the word. What's happened there? Just trying to share a screen, that's all, of John's blog. I'll, I'll put that, that put that link in the chat so you can click on it if you want to go and have a check up on that and have a read there see dispensational teaching is important yeah rightly in the word in yeah if you don't if you don't really if you don't rightly divide you're going to make a big mess of the bible yeah. What what's do you know uh, what's his first name, John? Who? Oh, reflect upon the word, he's gone. Oh he's oh. Oh yeah, he's gone. Oh. I thought we were gonna have a chat. Hmm. But yeah, there we have it. Uh the English Standard Version, I think that's what ESV is. Yeah, it's the English Standard Version. I, 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 I call, I call it, I call it the Extremely Satanic Version. Yeah. But the word dispensation for anybody else listening uh, is actually in Scripture. Yeah, it, appear, it appears four times. Appears four times in the Bible. Yeah. And dispensation of God. Dispensation of the grace of God and dispensation of the fullness of time. Yeah. Rather, uh, the four, those four verses are the four verses where the word appears is uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 9 17, Ephesians 1 10, Ephesians 3 2, and Colossians 1 25. Those are the four times dispensation yeah. appears in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> John. I've said this before, you'll, I mean, your behavior and the way 
that you are. I mean, you're leagues ahead of any of those, most of those people, if not nearly all of them, in the Denlinger or Fenninger crew. I mean, if I wanted to, I mean, I could disagree with you on a couple of things. Uh, but it's not something I would be uh, rude about or do a sort of hit piece on. You know. Yeah. None of us have got perfect doctrine. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, nobody can be infallible. We're not like our own little popes or whatever. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, also the um, ESV, I, I, I was reading... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm going to share this other link that you put up there, John. Oh, okay. I, I was just going to... Yeah, how the ESV... You know, it makes sense that these, these New Age Bibles teach poetry of heresy because they're, you know, of the Antichrist. But um, I was also going to say how the ESV also removes the word ret, term rightly dividing from 2 Timothy 2.15. It, it removes that term. So oh, it, like, yeah. it, it, gets ri- it gets rid of dispensational teaching. It says um, in 2 Timothy 2.15 in the um, ESV, it says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. So it gets rid of rightly dividing. Yeah, and work salvation as well, it sounds like there. Yeah. It? Yeah, the, the work salvation is all throughout the ESV. Like one verse one verse in particular is um, John 3.36, I think it is. Uh, in the ESV, it says, "Whosoever in John three thirty six, whosoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoso who whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him." Which the King James yeah. says, "You know, believeth not o- not obey." Yeah, lordship salvation as well there, then isn't it? Yeah, and and think of obedience, you know. Yeah, it's lordship salvation and lordship people will say, well, you know, obedience is not, is not works. Well, here, yeah, it is actually because Jonah 3.10, uh, it's, I mean, like, like, this is a good verse to use against them when they try to say obedience is not works. Uh, Jonah 3.10 says, and God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them and he did it not. So when he turned from an evil way, God's saying that's works. So turning from sin is works. Uh, so when they try to say obedience, what? And you, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there, John. Apologies. Go on, John. Okay, but I was going to say that basically that here in Jonah three ten, you know, turning from your evil way, turn like stopping your sin is works. So uh, when when Jesus says, you know, in well the false Jesus of the ESV says, you know, obey him, it's works salvation. It's Roman Catholicism. Yeah. And Jesus did say, if you love me, obey me. Yeah. Yeah, so if, if obedience does not works, then, you know, how do you get around that? And, of course, also the thing of, too, you know, they'll, they'll try to say of Hebrews 5, 9, which, you know, again, who's Hebrews written to? It's Hebrews, not, you know, whenever yeah. someone tries to say Hebrews is for the church, I always just say, okay, find me one verse in Hebrews that says about people being in Christ, because there's yeah. not one mention of anybody in Christ in the book of Hebrews. No. And the clue would be in but, the title, obviously. Yeah, but like, you know, uh, Hebrews 5, 9 says, and being made, being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So it's like, you know, again, it so again, it's for um, oh, what was it going with that? It's going for people in the time of Jacob's trouble. They're having to obey, to, you know, have eternal eternal salvation. And Hebrews is full of uh, things about the tabernacle, uh, Hebrew idioms, and and the Jew. Yeah, I mean, it is for Christians in the sense of, uh, it's. I mean, we can learn a ton of stuff from the Book of Hebrews. Yeah, instruction in righteousness. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And it, it, it's essentially written to the Jews, and they would have, a, uh, generally, I would have thought, a very good understanding of the Book of Hebrews. Yeah, well, why I mean, if you read he- why, yeah, why wouldn't Paul write a book that was sort of not dedicated but directed at the Jewish believers? Of course, he would. 
the Holy Spirit would Yeah, I mean, if you read Hebrews chapter 3, verses 8 to, uh, I think it's verses 8 to 17, it clearly shows that it's to the Jewish people. It talks about, you know, uh, in verse um, 9, when your fathers tempted me and proved me, saw my works 40 years, talks about being in the wilderness 40 years. When were Gentile Christians in the wilderness for, wilderness for 40 years? It's about the Jews. Uh, so it's clearly addressed to the Jewish people. Like, like it, it can be for instruction in righteousness, but it's not written to Christians, though. You know? Well, it shouldn't do that, you know. Um, I've got to say, Messianic believer, uh, it didn't offend me, but the Apocrypha is not scripture. It's never belonged. The Jews never accepted it, and the New Testament writers never did. Uh, I was told how it got in there. It doesn't belong in scripture in the Bible at all. I do have a copy. Um, have you come across the Apocrypha, John? Uh, I've heard of it, um, but based on my research, there, there's no uh, evidence that the Apocrypha was ever part of the, the inspired canon. So, um, oh. never quoted yeah. from by the apostles, more especially by Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it's not, it doesn't belong in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. If it did, it would be in there, John, and the Holy Spirit would make sure of that, absolutely. And it does not belong in that. It's a Catholic book, is what they use to just... Yeah, well, Catholics... It. I mean, Catholics will use that, you know, because there's verses in the Apocrypha that, you know, can be used to back up purgatory and, and that kind of stuff. So Catholics, they love the Apocrypha, Apocrypha oh. books. Yeah. I would never uh, well, another verse I want to bring up too, uh, on, on the thing of like you know work salvation because a lot a lot of lordship salvation people, you know and we could do a whole stream on this at some point. I've had a lot of these lordship salvation people, like a lot of these you know street preachers and that kind of stuff. You know they don't uh re they don't divide truth. They will go to verses that are are not written to Christians and try to apply it to Christians. Like one of the ones they'll try to do is uh First John two four. Uh, it says, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. I, I saw this guy, Jesse Morell, he's a street preacher, he tried to use that verse. But again, you know, when it comes to the epistles of John, you know, are the epistles of John, like, written completely to a Christian? Well, no, because um, John is, there, there can be instruction in righteousness, but John is not our apostle. Paul is our apostle to the Gentiles, you know, so using other you know the end some good stuff in the book of peter's too the epistles of peter but they're not like the epistles of peter are also not completely written to a christian so it's really important to rightly divide the word of truth and you know i'm wondering if a lot of this lord lordship salvation stuff uh is coming from these new versions perhaps they've been using the new actually or, or you, something you're actually writing that because a lot of these street preachers, I find a lot, a lot of the people who are like into no eternal security, you know, um, the thing of, of you have to live holy to be saved. A lot of them do, you know, they'll use the King James, but they're not King James only. They'll, they'll use modern versions. They'll quote, you know, the ESV, the NIV, you know. Whichever suits them at the time. Yeah, and, 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 and then some of them, like this this Richard Pankowski guy or this other ministry called don'tparish.com, they're, they're a big-time work salvationist, although they claim not to be. But I'd already had an email to and fro back with that guy, and then you mentioned, I think, you mentioned them to me. Or did I mention them to you, and then you told me? But, yeah, but, I, I go ahead. But... Um, the guy was almost asking me every question he could think of without even answering mine. Yeah. No, I'm blocking you. I blocked his email. Yeah, well, it's actually it's actually crazy too because um, uh, after I came up with my blog post, you know, showing that this, this don't perish dot com ministry are are work salvationists, he actually got on my Facebook page and said I'm a liar and said I should repent of my lies and that kind of stuff. And I said to him, okay, show me where I'm wrong. And he wouldn't do that. He just kept calling me a liar. He wouldn't he wouldn't deal with the with the what the scripture is and the, the whole thing, basically. I got blocked out of a chat room, John. I was on this website. I think it's called christianchat.com or something, and there's an app you download so you can go into a chat room and talk supposedly to Christians. And, of course, me being me, 
I can't remember. I mean, the first chance I got, I mentioned the King James Bible and that all the other Bibles are corrupt and blah, blah, and I pointed out a few things. And some of them were actually interesting what I had to say. And then I went on there today. I didn't say a word, John. I hadn't been on that app in three days, four days. I went on there. I didn't say a thing. And within five minutes, they just blocked me completely off it. Wow. Yeah. There was one time uh, back when I was, I think about two years ago or whatever, I was on this uh, Christian, quote unquote, Christian Reddit uh, forum on Reddit, reddit reddit.com. And I I posted some videos and I I used the word papist to refer to Catholics. And they banned me for that, for using the word papist to refer to Catholics. A lot of these websites are Catholic, John. Yeah, uh, a, a lot. A lot of them will, will like you know this like one website I did a video on pureflix.com. You know they have Christian movies and they they lump in Roman Catholics with you know Christians. That's one thing I noticed about these. I used to love these uh, Bible movies when I was a kid, uh, which was a long time ago. <laughs> and I watched them years later after I became a Christian, and I could sense and know that these these films were out of Hollywood on Jesus supposedly were yeah actually, there's a Catholic undercurrent to them John well the the movie uh, called um, what was it called uh, I forget it, it was like this, this one oh, film uh, let me try to find it The Passion by uh, Gibson no. no not that oh yeah that, that was Roman Catholic definitely um, The Road what was it called yeah it was called uh I can't remember. It was, uh, yeah, it was called Son of God 2014. That one uh, had Roman Catholics in their directing team and the storyline was written by Roman Catholics. And it also uh, is not scriptural because it also, they actually have a third, they actually, instead of having 12 apostles, they have a 13th apostle, which is female. So, you know, it distorts the the biblical story. And that was, that film was made in 2014 then, was it? Yeah, I remember actually uh, when I, because I, I, that, that was back when I was like in sixth grade. I was like twelve years old when it came out, but it uh, I remember it was like big. It was big. Oh, we gotta go see this or whatever. Um, yeah, but it was it was um, it, it basically was preaching a new age Christ. Essentially, it was you know distorting. Like it talked about how um, Jesus was like going to uh, Peter out in the fishing boat and was saying, "Hey, I came to change the world." You know, it's like where you know where does the Bible say he came to change the world? It doesn't say that, but it was their new age, you know, stuff they could slip in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Jesus didn't come to change the world. He came to die on the cross for your sins. That's how it goes. I think, uh, because I was watching this guy called Spencer Smith, missionary Spencer Smith. I've heard of him. He felt false teaching. Well, I'll send you a link to it. <clears throat> beg your pardon. In an email later. And uh, he he is exposing this uh, new age stuff. Yeah, I'm terrible. I got kicked out of the. Uh, a Sunday morning service once at Lindholm Jail, John. So oh, really? To you, yeah. Because I was in a, a so-called Bible study group with another brother. This is in Doncaster, Lindholm Jail, and we was witnessing to this guy who was going on about a rosary. And this woman who was taking me, I mean, I never took much notice of her. I knew she was Catholic. But she was married to a so-called pastor that visits the prison on a Sunday I got stopped from, I got banned from going to the Bible study group. That following Sunday, I was kicked out of the Sunday morning service. He wouldn't let me in. Wow. <laughs> uh, and praise God, I led one guy. I'm well, not led him, but I mean, I witnessed to him. He got saved. He left Roman Catholicism altogether. He dumped his rosary in the chaplaincy office at that same jail. And I've been treated like poop ever since till I got out of jail, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's just how it goes. I mean, 
because because you know and even you look at hollywood movies quote unquote christians people think of roman catholics basically yeah that really angers me roman catholics referring to themselves as being christian yeah why won't these dead fenningers expose roman catholicism john i mean the answer is obvious it's weird. Uh, it, it's weird. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, some of the, you know, it's good to expose false prophets, but like all they do is go after people. I mean, they don't spend their time rebuking Roman Catholicism or or that kind of stuff. It's like they have an agenda, obviously. Well, it seems. Well, they don't, or they, or they don't have one, and they just. I mean, it's either Jack Smack or Watchman D or or, or uh, I can't remember the name of that guy um recently they've been having go at but none of them none of them in the last 18 months since i got made into a jesuit has done anything exposing roman catholicism including ed benninger i don't know about yeah that. I'll- it's crazy. I mean, Max Barr has has done some stuff on the Pope, whatever, and attacking the Pope, but like the other oh, yeah. ones have not said a word about anything. No. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. So here's Ed Fenninger's channel, and you just go down, and it's like nothing on Catholicism, nothing on you know rebuking stuff like Islam or whatever, or, or atheism, or you know the feminist movement. All just you know attacking other people and everything. It's you know. Weird. I mean, that Shepherd's Ambassador. I mean, I thought it was the stu- uh, most foolish thing I've ever seen on the internet. I think. Using a Sinaiticus manuscript, so called, to prove some mysterious point about John 1 verse 1. And he was at least clever enough to delete the video. But. Yeah, oh. I remember King's Table. He, I, I had the clip of King's Table attacking me because he said, well, you know, uh, you attacked Tony for, for using church laws, but yet you bring out government documents in one of your video. I'm like, yeah, I'm not using them to prove a Bible doctrine. I'm just saying this is what science says. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to like use it to back, use it as like a biblical authority or something like that. Oh. He was trying to use those people as a biblical authority. That's a big difference. Yeah. No, you don't use secular stuff to prove God's word. You don't need to. Yeah, I, I was just like, like in my video, I was just like, you know, showing like doing a scientific video is different than trying to use that as like, a, as like, okay, this overthrows what the Bible says or whatever, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's done nothing on, I mean, I've done hundreds of videos on Roman Catholicism. Yeah, again, I have a playlist of 90 videos I've done attacking Catholicism. But the Catholics never turn up to me channels, John. Yeah, well, there, there's that one guy. What's his name? Oh, there's uh, Alex Canis or something. I think that's what his name is. Um, Canis, yeah. Yeah, that guy, yeah. You know, I think he has Mark. done... He mm-hmm. is. He's a, nice, he's, a, he's a knight of Columbus, I think. Columbus. I know it was new. It was one of the other. Yeah, well, he actually... Um, you know, I will admit he has brought out some videos showing some of the hypocrisy of brian i I will give him credit for that but it's very interesting how you know edward is not you know reproving him or telling him hey you should you know the catholic church is false you need to get saved you know it's kind of interesting oh yeah that is a good point i never thought of that I, i mean that one video you know that that was about, you know, attacking Brian or whatever. Um, the guy in that video brought up a good point. You know, why isn't Edward reproving him, you know, or, or trying to say, hey, you know, the Catholic Church is sending you to hell. You know, he's not reproving him. He's even harding some of his comments and like, you know, saying, hey, great comment, you know. And it's, it's very interesting how he doesn't reprove him or anything, like reprove a Catholic that's commenting. Yeah. That is a point. Yeah. It's an extra point that illustrates the point that that I made that they don't uh, expose these people, do they? Yeah, and not, not only that, I've actually seen some of of um, 
Everett's followers actually comment on his videos saying great video. I mean, I left a comment on one of his videos, but then I even said in the comment, hey, I don't agree with Catholicism. I think Catholicism is a false religion. But anyway, but great pointing out the hypocrisy of Brian. But then Ed's followers, they just say, hey, great video, brother. They call him a brother. Um, he's a Catholic. If he's a Catholic, he's not your brother unless you're a Catholic yourself. Yeah. There's no way I would ever refer to a Catholic or a Knight of Columbus. Yeah. Or Knight of Malta or whatever as a brother. Yeah. No. Yeah, which just goes to show, you know, they, they do have some connections. Unfortunately, but it's like, I'm, I'm just... It's like I'm just scrolling down further, and it's like all I see is just attacking, attacking Brian, attacking Robert Breaker or Peter Ruckman. It's like, you know, no exposing of evil, no exposing Catholicism, just you know, just attacking people he doesn't agree with, basically. Well, Jacob Thompson. Well, I call him Jacob anyway because he's a joke. Yeah, he is. Break, uh, use breaker as a means of insulting someone. Oh yeah, thank you for the breaker esque uh, essay. And yet, Jake, yeah, wow. Well. Jake did an. Somebody wrote quite a long thing. I felt like commenting in the a paragraph would be useful here. But then Jake did a long uh, answer to somebody else. Blah 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 blah. You know. Uh, double standard, John. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Jay, again, J two does. He's prideful, and, and as a result, he can't see his own errors and hypocrisy. Well, he's blinded to it, isn't he? Yeah. Isn't like, it? like Obadiah, it's like Obadiah one three says, "The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee." You know. Yeah. But it's like that phrase I just coined earlier. Um. There are a lot of things worse than this, but being ignorant of your own ignorance isn't a virtue. Uh, yeah. Ignorance means lack of knowledge, John. That's all it is. It's not a painful mm -hmm. thing to be. You know, I don't know everything. That's why I'm ignorant. That's why we study God's word to be less ignorant, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like I'm so I'm scrolling down and I still have not found a single video on Catholicism. Oh. Now I've got to ask you a question here, John. I'm not trying to put yeah. you on a spot or do a gotcha question, you know. The, um I've noticed Brian Danlinger, he's got all the Ruckman books. Um Jacob Thompson, he's got Ruckman books, although I can't see his bookshelf that well. Sure he has. I know he has. Tim I'm not sure I've ever seen these books, you know? but they all seem to have Ruckman books. What is this Ruckman guy about? Because he seems to be part of the undercurrent of what this Brian Dellinger crew are like. Yeah, I actually have some of Ruckman's books too. I have, you know, some of his books attacking. I do have some of his books exposing Catholicism and Islam and stuff. Um, yeah. He he has. I have two books about him exposing Islam and and him. I think four books on him he did exposing Roman Catholicism. Uh basically yeah. he is um he's he's basically the guy that Brian looks up to. And you know, he he is right on a lot of his doctrine, believes the right gospel, uh is right on dispensationalism, pre trip rapture. Um yeah. or he was, he I mean he's the see he's dead now, but um yeah. be you know, um he has you know, he does have some peculiar beliefs. I mean, one of the one of them is that, you know, one of the things I would disagree with him on is his stance that the King James is actually advanced revelation, you know, above, you know, Hebrew and Greek and that kind of stuff. And I'm not the kind of person where I just you know, rely on the Greek and everything. Um, but I don't agree with him. I mean, I do believe the King James is an accurate translation of, and it is, um, it was given by the inspiration of God. God used the translators to make the King James Bible and that the King James Bible is better than the perverted, wicked, modern new, modern new versions. And the King James Bible is all we need for, for doctrine. We don't need Greek. We don't need Hebrew. But I don't believe there was advanced revelation above the Greek and Hebrew. So that's the area I disagree with yeah. them on, basically. I'm going to put a link in the private chat, John. Okay. I'll put it in 
I'll put it in the uh, the normal chat for everybody else to check out. It's a website I found with a quote from Ruckman in it. And I actually went to a certain website and I got the actual PDF of the bulletin newsletter thingy. I'll send it to you in an email. Uh, I don't know if you want me to show you. Can I take can I take that screen down, John? Sure. All oh, right. Uh, I'll just get rid of this one. I don't want to see his ugly face anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it'll come up okay. Oh yeah. There's a video there as well. The links there. He quotes Ruckman in blagging up his book, The Salient Verses. Mr. Ruckman makes these comments. Uh, quotation marks. If you are able to obtain a copy of Ruckman's proposed new book, you will have in your hands a minimum of 200 advanced revelations that come from the inherent English text that were completely overlooked or ignored in brackets by every major Christian scholar since 90 AD. And this wow. includes, yeah, but you see, that is a quote of Ruckman. He's according to this guy boasting himself up i've actually went to a website bible believers bulletin and i actually got this bulletin in pdf form i haven't a chance to check it up but i'm sure it's right because he made a, a quote there and i've actually got it hey <laughs> can you send me the pdf yes i will do i'll send you a link to this in an email and the pdf it's on page two and page four of that bulletin. I will send it to you. I won't forget. Okay. Right. In fact, I'll do it now. Yeah, so uh, um, the website has a link to David Cloud's website where it says, talks about how, you know, uh, it links to this, I guess this um, was like a, apparently this, I guess this this article or something about Peter Ruckman where it's saying that, uh, he Peter Ruckman made a statement, quote, the AV 1611 reading here is superior to any Greek text, which, you know, apparently he wrote that in his Christian handbook of manuscript evidence, which I would disagree with him on that. I do believe the King James is, in, it was inspired. God used translators to make the King James. God has yeah. blessed the King James. The King James is the preserved word of God. It was an accurate, trans. It is, it is an accurate translation of God's word, but it's not, advanced revelation or superior to the Greek and Hebrew. I don't believe that. Now, God is able to preserve his word. And this thing about him having special revelation. No. I don't accept that. Yeah, and it's like, you know, I, I quoted on my website too, and my website, What We Believe, the section of what, called What We Believe, I write, you know, I make very clear, you know, we believe the King James Bible is the is the word of God, perfect and without error in English. So, I, like, I'm not the kind of person where I correct the King James Bible. No, the King James Bible corrects me. I don't correct it. And then I write, you know, the NA, NIV, ESV, NASB are all satanic counterfeits of God's word that teach heretical doctrine and twist the nature of God and deny biblical salvation. I wrote, we hold to the we hold to the King James Bible because of its textual purity, verbal beauty, and translational accuracy. And I quote some scriptures about that. Then I write, we believe that God has preserved his written word through the ages. And I quote Psalms 16, or sorry, Psalms 12, 6 to 7. Uh, Psalms 119, 89, Isaiah 40, verse 8, and 1 Peter 1, 25, and I wrote God's word is available in English via the King James Bible. And I gave some uh, historical evidence too. So like, I'm, I'm made clear that I, I support the King James. I'm King James only. I reject the modern versions, but I don't believe that it's advanced revelation or somehow like superior to the Greek and Hebrew. That's, you know. Assuming you could read even, uh, Hebrew and Greek. Yeah, I, I can't read Hebrew and Greek. That's why I mean I can't read Hebrew and Greek, so I you know rely on the King James. You know, the, well, really the only really really the only time I really use Greek and Hebrew is I use it to define words. I might use it as a dictionary, but that's really the only time I'd ever use Greek and Hebrew. 
Yeah, I used to do. I used to do both actually. I memorized all of Genesis one in Hebrew in writing and reading and whatever you know. Mm. But I should have kept it up really. I've sent that e in an email to you, John, just this very second. Oh, thanks. I don't know if you've got it yet or. Yeah, and, and you know stuff like this. You know, it's like you can kind of see why some people would label the King James movie as a cult because, you know, some people are saying, unfortunately, that the King James, they're going beyond that it's an accurate translation of God's preserved word and that, you know, the King James was, you know, given with the help of the Holy Spirit. They go beyond that and saying that it's an advanced revelation, which reinforces the myth that we're somehow a cult, those of us who hold to the King James Bible only. Yeah. Well, it's one of those words like, that phrase conspiracy theorist isn't it yeah the label you is that rather than tell the truth you know yeah and the people who do call us a cult they ignore that you know there are plenty of king james only people who who don't believe that it's advanced revelation and who do you know who, who do uh understand what the modern version say and we know why the modern i mean a lot of us who are King James only, we hold to the King James because we, we, we understand what the modern versions teach and we understand that modern versions are satanic. We're not ignorant to what the modern versions teach, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, the definitely satanic, John. Yeah. I mean, I mean, when I saw the ESV gives Satan one of Jesus' titles, yep, yeah, it's satanic. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Oops, forgot I was still screen sharing. Oh. Are you showing? Oh, there you are. I'm showing. I'm showing the what we believe tab about, about oh, like, yeah, our stance, the, the stance on the like, like the stance we take. Yeah. My my group, I have the stance we take on the King James. And I even linked to the David Cloud's website. Yeah, some people, some people I hang out with online. We just kind of, we just call ourselves faithful servants of Christ. It's just some guys I hang out with online. Oh, on, on like on, on Discord or Gab these? or, yeah, like Discord or Gab or just you know some group of friends I hang out with. All right, okay. They're all Canadian, yeah. are they? Uh, so, you know, yeah, a lot of them are Canadian. A lot of them I know in person too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying to intrude, John. I'm just, you know. Oh, no, no, no. you're not really intruding. Bit of a, I'm a bit of a me. Yeah. Sometimes, you know. Uh, yeah, I get that a lot, <laughs> actually. You know, like when people say, "Oh, we," like just saying, "Who is we?" You know, because like all they see is me in videos. So they say, "Who's we?" I just say, "Oh, just guys I hang out with on Discord or Gab or whatever." Oh, he's making a beef stew, is he? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I actually um at one point I actually um in my in the section of uh salvation I actually mentioned Aaron during it, right? You know, I wrote um we reject the unscriptural Calvinist heresy propagated by false teachers like Aaron Deering. That person has to be weeping, crying, and bawling their eyes out in order for God to save them, or to show genuine repentance. And I quote some verses in the book of Acts, which show people getting saved without weeping and crawling and bawling their eyes out. I don't read anything in scripture, John, and I've read all of it where somebody's crying and weeping and blah, blah. Yeah. When they get saved. Never heard Yeah, and there are plenty and there are plenty of examples. Uh like, like in Acts eighteen, seven to eight, Acts eight, thirty five, thirty nine, John four, all this stuff. Uh people getting saved and there's no mention of them weeping and bawling their eyes out. I mean, that Ethiopian eunuch, he didn't start weeping and crying. He, just, he, got, he asked to be baptized, and that was it. He was gone off. See? Yeah. I mean, he, he, even the Philippian jailer, too, he was trembling, but he was not weeping and crying and bawling his eyes out. He was just trembling. You know, there's no mention of him bawling his eyes out and crying. And I don't think it was in fear. Or was it? It could have been. Well, I think what happened was that he he was going to kill himself. I mean, he drew his sword out, was going to kill himself, and Paul, you know, stopped him. But 
you know, again, if, if you have to be weeping and crying, if like you have to be weeping and crying to show genuine repentance, well, why wasn't the Philippian jailer weeping and crying? Why was she just trembling? But the only person I remember having wept in the New Testament is Jesus, and it's a two word verse Jesus wept. Yeah. And, and of course, they like to quote, uh, what's that verse in Psalms? They like to quote that. Uh, it was, um, let me try to find it. Which is kind of funny because, you know, so much of being dispensational. Yeah. It's uh, Psalms 34 18. It says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth as such be of a contrite spirit. And it's like, uh, again, who is this for? It's Old Testament under the law. So they're, they're taking that and trying to say it's salvation for it today because they'll say, that they'll take that verse and say, see, you have to be a broken heart and a contrite spirit to be saved. Um, I thought you were dispensational, you know? Yeah. And what your heart got to do with salvation is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Yeah. The heart is deceitful, desperately, desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? Messianic, believe me, come over any time. You're more than welcome. I love Jewish Christians, John. Christians. Who just happened to be Jewish? Messiah yeah. Jews. Yeah, honestly, honestly, think of the heart too. Matthew chapter fifteen, verse eighteen. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. One sec. Is that you can't? Is it? Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, uh. Sorry, I had a little interruption there. But uh, yeah, it was my cat. He was, he wanted it out. <laughs> he was meowing. <laughs> yep. But anyway, so Matthew 15, 18, it says, But those things which proceed uh, out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murderers, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Uh, these are the things which defile a man. But to eat uh, from unwashed hands defileth not a man. So, you know, yeah. the heart, evil, evil things come out of the heart. You know, yeah. Uh, that's why I see on Disney. You know, oh, follow your heart. Let your heart decide. Uh, no, don't let your heart decide because your heart is desperately wicked. Yeah, and the thing is, your heart tells you nothing about God. God's word yeah. tells you about God and your salvation. Yeah. yeah. And oftentimes, when you see on Disney when it says follow your heart, it's often you know like like it's often rebellion and that kind of stuff, and you know breaking the rules and everything. Yeah, your heart. It's actually very interesting. You if you look at a lot of these Disney films, you know, a lot of these Disney films are centered around like women, and they're often in a kind of a structured system. They're in kind of a a system of order, and they have to break out of that system and you know be liberated and you know that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, some serious you know wicked themes in those films. That feminism stuff, John. You did a video on it today, I think, or was it yesterday? Yeah, I did one on on it today. Feminism, I mean, they've got women in the British Army now, in the regiments, I think. And I think feminism, in mean, one way or another, it can't, I haven't really researched it, I haven't got time really, but I think it causes a sort of, a certain amount of sort of feminism within the male. Well, that's the thing too. You know, when the when the woman becomes all dominant like that, the man becomes kind of you know meek and kind of like, oh, you know, I should submit to her and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. On the battlefield, you don't want to be worrying about what the women are doing or running around trying to protect them when they're supposed to be doing whatever they're supposed to be doing. And like, it it, it just make hard work. You've got to compensate for the women being there. Yeah, and, and you know, I covered this in my video. I, I did, you know, the reason why feminism is bad is because, you know, women are supposed to have a man over them because, you know, in First Timothy two fourteen, it talks about how Adam was not deceived, but Eve was deceived. So yeah. women can be can be more easily manipulated. That's not, you know, it's not being mean. It's just a fact. They can be more easily manipulated. And again, First Timothy First Timothy two fourteen, you know makes clear that you know adam was not was not deceived eve was easily deceived adam knew better he only do it yeah. did it because he didn't want to be without eve for eternity so uh that that was the whole thing there but women can be more easily manipulated and deceived that's why they have to have a man over them basically uh, they are 
I don't know how they manage it, John. I don't put up with it. They, uh, they deceive men. And you've got to uh, adjust yourself to them. Yeah. Most women are deceivers. I mean, some of the women in the Benningerite crew, what a despicable bunch. Apart yeah. From, possibly. Maybe two. But I mean, oh. I mean, remember that well, he... our live stream, John, don't you? Yeah, I remember that. Uh, here's that. Here's actually um, a verse that kind of ties into this. Um, talks about uh, it's the Second Timothy three six. It says, "For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead lead, lead captive silly women laden laden with sins, uh, led yeah. away with diverse lusts." And silly in that passage means stupid, basically. Yeah. And it says in verse seven, uh, "Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth." Good description of all these fending right women. Yeah, I'm sick of hearing women say, oh, I don't know what you mean. Every time I phone up to get a prescription, not absolutely every time, but at least 80, 90% of the time, the conversation turns into absolute hell, John. I mean, it did do when I turned up there the other day, or a week or two ago, and I had to repeat myself three times to her. Oh. And honestly, John, I'm not saying this, I mean, I haven't got a problem with women in general. I nearly started, I think, I nearly started screaming in frustration at the conversation because it was going round and round in circles. Mm. Really. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, you know, they're, they're, they're a silly woman laid into sin or whatever, paraphrasing, of course. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I've got no problem with women. I just wish. Yeah, I mean, were. women have their place, have their role, but when they try to usurp the, the role of men, that's a big problem. Yeah, well, every time I go to a counter where I live in Blackpool, there's always a woman behind it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh. So, what, what is this? If you don't mind me asking, John, I'm not trying to be nosy or. Or doc, I don't do all that doxing stuff. What is your job? Is it the same place that you're just on night shift? Uh, no, it's it's a different place. Yeah. And you're okay with night shift, are you? Yeah, actually, I, I like it. Because I could have the whole thing to myself. Yeah. You get the whole place to yourself? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like I don't have to deal with just people every single day and everything. It's, you know. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, I did night shift at this recycling plant. Mm. Oh, what a depressing place to be, John. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's like, it, it it's like, it can be that way, yeah. Oh, my arm. Ah, there you go, just move my arm. Are you doing 10-6, are you? Huh? Oh, no, um... 11 to Nine. 7. Sorry? 11 oh, to 7. 11, right, okay. Yeah. So once you, uh, yeah. I used to do 10 6. Once it got past midnight, it was see, it always seemed to be downhill after that. After we had the second break time. Hmm. Well, you'll get extra pay, won't you? For nice. Yeah, true. I it definitely will. Yeah, it, it's going to be good. Plus, I get to have the whole day to myself too when I get home. Yeah. Make sure you get your sleep, John. Because. Oh yeah, obviously, obvi obviously, I, I mean, I, I don't want to go without sleep. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. It, it'll be kind of weird. Go ahead. You've got a good shift time there, at eleven seven, so you can you can get some sleep up to eleven o'clock, and you, you've got most of the day, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, because like, because humans only need about like seven hours of sleep, so like, I I'd have like plenty of hours to get sleep. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to get to sleep because I used to get home about what quarter to seven in the morning, I think. 
and everybody's sort of waking up and going to work then, so it was getting a bit noisy. Yeah. That's in the other town. It. And mm -hmm. Well, I, I have to get going now. Uh, great chatting with you. All right, John. I'll put you a PayPal link, and I'll put it at the bottom of this video when it's uploaded. I'll put it Thanks. on another video as well, but hopefully, I mean, somebody will donate to you. All right, yeah. E okay. Either way, you know, once I do start doing the night shift, I'll be, making, I'll be able to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, you have anyway. to do hand, you, John. Huh? Will you work a week in hand? I might. Who knows? I, I mean, I don't know. Have but to figure that out. You have to do your foot. You don't get paid the first week, but you get paid for the previous week, the next week. Yeah, I get every, every two weeks, I get my thing all right oh okay right john all right talk to you I'm see you later you came in thank you for that yeah thank you brother